Hello and welcome to the Glasshouse Festival, Poetry from Around the World. We bring to you 85 plus poets coming together in support of creative people impacted by COVID. The Glasshouse Festival is wholly promoted by the Art Mantram Trust, which is a not-for-profit organization out of Bangalore, India, that has been promoting the arts, artists and art awareness since 1999. This panel is a synonym for the sky with Gitanjali Rajan, Michael Dillon Welch and Terry Hill French. Our moderator today is Akhla Ji. Akhla writes free verse, haiku, and haiku in English. She has presented her poetry at the Goa Arts and Literature Festival, TEDx at VNR Regent College, Hyderabad, and Sahitya Academy's Young Writers Festival in Jammu. She is an active member of the Twin City Poetry Club in Hyderabad, and her poem Stains is shortlisted for the Women Inc. Saki Award 2018. Over to you, Akhila. So welcome to this panel, a synonym of sky, readings of haiku. Thank you, Art Mantra, for organizing this. I have three distinguished poets, or hygiens, as I should call them, who are, who are joining uh, me today to read and share with all of you some of their rich compositions. So I'll quickly introduce all of them to you. So may I also request my dear panelists to wave their hand at the audience as I introduce all of you. So first is first we have Michael, Michael Dylan Welsh. Michael has been investigating haiku since 1976. He runs National Haiku Writing Month and shares his poetry, essays and reviews at graceguts.com. Then we have writer and editor Terry French. Terry has been writing haiku for about 12 years. She currently is on the Haiku Foundation Board of Directors and the editorial team of Contemporary Haibun Online. And then we have Gitanjali Rajan. Gitanjali teaches Japanese and English in Chennai. She has been writing haiku and related forms for over 15 years. She currently edits haiku at Cat Tales. So this is our lovely panel today. Welcome to all three of you. And well, I'm Akila, I've been introduced and I'll also be reading some of my poems with these brilliant hygiens. So, uh, Michael, do we begin with you then? Yes. Thank you very much for having, having us here today. It's an honor to be part of the Glass House Festival. And uh, I hope it uh, reaches and inspires many people who are able to tune in and enjoy the poetry and discussions. Uh, Today, I'm going to read a, a sequence, and I'll share my screen so you hopefully can see this now. Um, this is a collection of poems from the Haiku Society of America membership anthologies, and uh, I'll explain a little bit about them and read the, the poems from it. In uh, 1993, I proposed that the Haiku Society of America start publishing an annual membership anthology following the practice of the Haiku Canada organization. As a result of this proposal, I did the layout and design and wrote the introduction for the first HSA anthology. The following are all my poems from these collections. 1993, you know, the, and the title of each anthology is next to the year. After dinner mints, passed around the table, slow falling snow. 94, a crying ghost, Halloween loot bag burst on the sidewalk. 95, dust settles after the passing car, the slow windmill. 96, home for Christmas, my childhood desk drawer empty. 97, roar of the mist bus. The stone I kicked falls into a storm drain. And for some reason, I have several bus poems that I've uh, submitted for these anthologies. This is one of them. 
98. Together, we take the old dog's route, summer rain. 99. Muddy lakeshore, paw print on the monarch's wing. 2000. So taken by the doodle on your bookmark, I lose your place. 2001. Commuter train, that girl again, reading another romance. 2002. Night flight, a little girl turns her doll to face me. It's after J.D. Salander. 2003, gliding hawk, the glint of sun from a fish's eye. 2004, dust storm, a fence post unweathered below the soil line. 2005, morning sickness, the patter of spring rain on our new roof. 2006, a lull in the wind, tips of pines clearer in the fog. 2007, into the lake, our skipping stones, intermingling rings. 2008, lazy day, I give her wind chime a stir. 2009, sharp Winnipeg wind, walking backwards to the bus. I lived in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, in the cold Canadian winters for quite a few years. So this poem takes me back. 2010, Darwin's Barbary, place where the skid marks stop. 2011, morning light, the seed pod rattles in the baby's hand. 2012, 2013, on the merry-go-round, my daughter, a few fallen leaves. 2014, yard sale, a row of empty jars tinged slightly red. 2015, tide rip, slant of light through the islands. 2016, first flurries, a skateboard broken into. 2017, late for the bus, pedals swirl in a hearse's wake. There's another bus call. 2018, deepening debt, snow along the rim of the clay flower pot. 2019, first rose, my pet toddler's breath, Parting the petals. 2020, funerals end, a whisper passed from ear to ear. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was such a lovely collection. Uh, my favorite was the Halloween bag. My daughter loves it. <laughs> so I'm glad. It's Halloween. Halloween has reached you there. It's not just an American thing. Not at all. It's everywhere. <laughs> you know, here we almost have some kind of a procession where the kids go around the houses asking for, you know, trick or treats and <laughs> it's, fun. it's real fun. You know, talk of globalization. <laughs> so, um, Terry, could we have you next reading? Sure. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I found that during this time, uh, I've been very stressed and overwhelmed, and it's been difficult for me to get in the mood to write. 
And one thing I found that it's helped is to collaborate with other people. And so I've been writing some renge with other people. Um, this whole reading I'm going to be, because it's called uh, a synonym for sky, I decided to read things that um, come from the sky or are in the sky, such as clouds and moon and rain and snow and all those things. So the first thing I'd like to read is a renge that my husband and I wrote together, actually sitting around the campfire. And it's called Trajectory. Bonfire. A fairy's flight of embers into the night. Passing between branches, travel moon. The wings of Pegasus brush through Jupiter's rings. A wash with draconids, indigo sky. A bit of stardust in the raven's nest. Her ashes come to rest beneath the cosmos. And now I'd like to read um, a couple of haibun um, and some haiku, and I will read the haiku twice for you since I don't have them on the screen. This first one I wrote um, shortly before my father passed, and it's called A Hole in the Dome. My dad has a sitter. She doesn't do her nails, smack her gum, or talk on the phone to her boyfriend like my childhood sitters did. She does give sponge baths, change diapers, and coax him into eating unpalatable mush. She also keeps a sign on his vital signs, and she makes sure he doesn't pull out his IV. She doesn't read bedtime stories, but my sitters didn't either. Mine used to make Jiffy Pop popcorn. I remember the time she yelled at me when I poked a hole in the expanding aluminum dome. Dad's sitter never yells. Dad always drove my sitter home after he and mom returned from a night of playing cards with the neighbors or going to a movie. I'm sure he made small talk with her and she probably felt a little awkward. His sitter glances at the clock. Soon her shift will end and her replacement will come. But before she leaves, she pulls the sheet up higher over his bony chest and softly wishes him good night. An hour past bedtime, the Big Dipper flipped upside down. An hour past bedtime, the Big Dipper flipped upside down. A red flyer rusts in the old shed's rafters, grackle moon. A red flyer rusts in the old shed's rafters, grackle moon. And for this segment, I would just like to read um, one more haibun and a couple of uh, haiku. This is a short one and it is called White Noise. I'm getting my oil changed. Seated next to me in the waiting room, a woman relays a message to Siri. A talk show blares on the TV in the corner. Christmas music crackles over their lousy sound system. <sighs> I close my book of haiku. All this snow, I decide to get plowed. All this snow, I decide to get plowed. Dark clouds, a race through the Zen garden. Dark clouds, a race through the Zen garden. Thank you. Your first high bull literally gave me goosebumps. Oh, thank you. And I, that movement was so beautiful of, you know, the great dipper just, uh, you know, turning around. Such a beautiful collection, Terry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Gitanjali, could we have you? 
Thank you, Akila. Um, when I heard of the name of the session, the synonym for the sky, what brought to mind, you know, what came to mind is Kalidasa's Meghaduta or Cloud Messenger, where, um, of course, we know it as a lyrical epic, but um, there's a stanza which says, Ashadasya Pratama Divase, which is uh, in the first day of the month of Ashada, Kalidasa describes a lone cloud atop a mountain. And uh, that's the kind of observation I think that really, really inspires haiku too. Right? So let me also start with a haiku on the sky. Cobalt blue, guessing the color of sky in your land. So the haiku that I will be reading today are moments uh, from my own life. And I was hoping to take you through a, a hypothetical year of my life through the small events that take place where I live in uh, South India. So in January, there's a festival uh, called Pungal that's celebrated, which is a harvest festival where uh, we pray, pray to the sun god for abundance. And the rest of India probably knows it as uh, Makar Shankaranti. So it's a time of great joy for the children. Pongal, her anklets follow, a cowbell's tinkle. Pongal, her anklets follow, a cowbell's tinkle. Spring in her step, she skips to the next sunspot. I live in a cosmopolitan city, which is very busy. And uh, sometimes February is a difficult month. Valentine's Day, no one picks the misshapen chocolate. Valentine's Day, no one picks the misshapen chocolate. From the month of March, it's one long summer in Chennai and the temperatures reach 43 degrees in May. It's humid. Uh, sometimes the heat is oppressive. At uh, other times it's not so bad. Clear sky. Clear sky. The vendor sells clouds of cotton candy. Face down. Face down. An April noon bereft of dreams. Dog days. The boy crawls under a parked truck. Dog days. The boy crawls under a parked truck. So uh, to escape the heat, sometimes if, if you're lucky and get a couple of days off, uh, we go off into the hills and my favorite spot is uh, the Nilgiris or the Blue Mountains, very close by, uh, Kunor being a particularly uh, lovely place. So, blue gum, I taste a mouthful of mountain air. Blue gum, I taste a mouthful of mountain air. Another one from the mountains. Mountain trek, her laughter echoes the tinkling stream. Mountain trek, her laughter echoes the tinkling stream. Evening falls rather early in the hills and here's another one. Mountain lake, each splash from the oar shakes the moon. So um, when we return from the hills, it's normally time for a new um, school term. So here's one from around that time. I wipe my tears as her tiny fingers unclasp. First separation. I wipe my tears as her tiny fingers unclasp. First separation. So uh, when you come back around, the time is also the uh, wonderful festival of Eid. So for Eid, as children, we would always go uh, to a friend's place and uh, her mother would cook us some lovely food. So this is for her. Eid feast, Eid feast, every morsel spiced with Ma's memories. Talking of festivals, uh, about 10 years ago on uh, Janmashtami, 
which is celebrated as the birth of Lord Krishna, a little kitten wandered into my home. And uh, of course, she's part of the family now. So uh, some people celebrate Janmashtami by drawing a little baby feet prints with batter to show the entry of the Lord into the house. So here's one from there. Janmashtami mixed with his feet prints, my kittens pause. Mixed with his feet prints, my kittens pause. So uh, I come from Kerala, uh, from a little village. And there the harvest season is pretty important. So I have a few uh, haiku from uh, the harvest season in Kerala. Childhood song, the rhythm of women threshing grain. Childhood song, the rhythm of women threshing grain. A hand full of rice at the end of day. Harvest moon. Here I've interpreted the harvest moon as the moon um, which is closest to Onam, which is uh, the harvest festival in Kerala around the time of September. Uh, the month is called Chingam in Malayalam. Harvest moon, I count every coin in my palm. A very uh, talented bilingual poet translated this into Malayalam, uh, Anita Varma. And, um, it sounds better in the translated version. Allow me to read it because of the musicality. Chingamasa Chandran Kai Vilayile Nanayangal Innum Nanyan. There's a musicality to it. Better than the original. Soon after uh, September, when we come back, uh, it's in, in, in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, we have the Northeast month monsoons and they kind of start in around the time of October and that's the only time Chennai kind of cools down and we really wait for those rains. Monsoon, monsoon, only a hint of sky in the puddles. After the rains, after the rains at the music class, a chorus of sneezes so every year we also have cyclones and storms and, and, and a lot of destruction, unfortunately. So here are a few. Last night's storm. Last night's storm. Mother sweeps away the broken nest. A jasmine shrub upturned by the storm, still fragrant. In 2016, we had a particularly bad cyclone and uh, Chennai lost uh, quite a bit of its green cover. So here's one from that time. At the grave of the avenue trees, at the grave of the avenue trees, purple wildflowers. So this brings me to the end of a cycle, a year, and also the time when we introspect about the year that's passed. So here's a send you from there. Um, book keeping. Book keeping. I try to balance the year's karma. And how does one manage the balancing? Everyday yoga. Everyday yoga. The single leg balance of here and there. Thank you, Akila. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ketanjali. That was a lovely collection. I, I connect with all of them. My parents are settled in Chennai and I'm also from Kerala. So I could almost connect with all those pieces. And it's amazing that today, while we talk so much about uh, nature and seasons in our uh, you know, collection, uh, I believe we had a comet visiting us yesterday called uh, Neowise. I have some pictures which my cousin has sent. So talk of, uh, you know, talk of everything coming together for this. So well, it's uh, my turn now. And uh, my first set, it has a few haiku and one haibun. And all of them revolve around my 10-year-old daughter. 
Last lap. I asked the doctor, boy or girl. Last lap. I asked the doctor, boy or girl. Moonba. They say, I have your eyes. Moonba. They say, I have your eyes. Class test. Filling in the blanks in a star's life cycle. Class test. Filling in the blanks in a star's life cycle. Bedtime story. She asks me to be louder for the stars. Bedtime story. She asks me to be louder for the stars. I'll read a high boom now. Boy. We snorkel in the reef island of Seraya for corals, tigerfish, and mantari. But the most intriguing are the starfish, for which there are no synonyms in my daughter's crayon box. An unusual pale yellow, cream with black spots, dark orange glows majestic on their skin, especially the ones in royal blue that glisten in the waterbed. Painting class, her skirt no longer white. The beach slumbers after sunset. When night camouflages the sky, the sea bed spreads in the sand. An idyllic solitude after a day of ebbing and floating with divers, boats, prey and predators. It mirrors our madcap sun in the city, beaten down to dust and dreams. Graveyard shift, tracing the Ursa Major. The next day, we pick seashells. While I search for pale pink, light gray, conch-shaped and cowrie shells, my daughter holds the white, tiny, triangular ones softened at the corners. She puts them in the box with the shells that we had gathered from the banks of the river Godavari. I wonder what stories they would share with each other. Back home an extra pinch of salt in my cooking. Back home, an extra pinch of salt in my cooking. Thank you. So we get into another round of reading, Michael. Okay, thank you. Um I also wanted to mention that um, I have memories of visiting Kolkata and uh, New Delhi as a child. And I also knew Anjali Diodar, met her many times at various uh, haiku events. And uh, this last sequence uh, I'd like to share, I'd like to uh, do in, in honor of her. Um, it's not about her at all, uh, as you'll see, but I'd like to do it in her memory. So uh, let me share my screen. This is a sequence that I call forgiveness. The cowboy hat you never let me wear. Forgiven. Carolers at the door, forgiven. Forgiven. My mailbox empty again. Fresh snow at the train station, forgiven. Bits of soap still in the dish, forgiven. Child's voice calling from off stage. Forgiven. Suicide note at the bottom of the door. Forgiven. Apple pie 
cooling on the counter were given. Forgiven, my Christmas letter returned to sender. Car radio left off the entire trip. Forgiven, walking the gallery alone. A cereal bowl with leftover milk. Forgiven. Coast Redwood now on its side. Forgiven. Forgiven. An outdoor chess set in the fog. The Confederacy statue in the downtown park. Pigeons parading along the dance hall roof. Forgiven. The iron grate elevator chimes at each floor. Forgiven. Toothpicks scattered. Forgiven. Dewdrops on the tips of the gift cactus. Forgiven. Cleaning the holes of the garlic press. Forgiven. A seed packet included with your letter. Forgiven. Harp strings wavering when you walk by. Forgiven. An unused plane ticket, Mazatlan. Forgiven. Roll of buttons in your junk drawer. Forgiven. 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 Way home, all green lights. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Your animated uh, sequence, your presentation has given a completely different flavor, you know, to the times we are in. We are engaging virtually in poetry with each other and we have a virtual audience. And, uh, you know, it, it just, it's, it's become a completely different experience, you know, seeing the words roll one after the other on the screen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Terry, could we have you reading next? Sure, I'm gonna read um, a few more haibun and some haiku. Uh, you were talking about your child who's 10 years old, girl or boy, did you say? Girl. A girl, okay. I have two boys and it's been a long time since they've been 10 years old. One is uh, 27 and one is 30. And I can't even believe that. But this haibun was about another young man I uh, met one day. He wasn't my son, but could very well have been. And it's called down in the mouth. Uh, if you're not familiar with the expression, expression that means it's sort of a, a string of bad luck. Down in the mouth. His cardboard sign simply reads homeless. I'm in the parking lot of the local Kroger loading my groceries. When I spot him at the curb, his back against a tree, the sign resting on his knees. I shut the trunk and walk over to him. He's young, I, I guess not over 20, but he wears the weary look of an old man. 
Hey, I say, how's it going? A stupid thing to ask, but a conversation starter nonetheless. Not so good, he tells me, running his hand through his shaggy blonde hair. I just got out of jail. My folks won't let me come home. My girlfriend's pregnant, but her folks won't let me see her. I got no money and no place to go. I ask him why he was in jail, and he says for possession, but he doesn't tell me what he was possessing. Are you using now, I ask. No, ma'am, I'm clean, he says. Yeah, well, I've heard that same line from my own son before. I don't give him any money, but I offer to buy him lunch at the McDonald's across the street. He orders a Big Mac, large fries, a chocolate shake, and an apple pie. I tell him about the local rescue mission and I give him a couple of phone numbers to call. Mine isn't one of them, I know better. When I hug his neck, I smell pot. Good luck, I say, what else is there to say? Thanks for lunch, ma'am. I really doubt if my gift of greasy fast food is gonna make much of a difference. But if he was my son, I'd hope another mother would be kind enough to offer him a meal. A layer of ice forms over the bridge, winter rain. A layer of ice forms over the bridge, winter rain. Snow on snow, an angel loses his wings. Snow on snow, an angel loses his wings. This next high bun is a little lighter. Uh, it's called Geronimo. My husband um, retired a little over a year ago and we sold our home and we are living in our RV now. So this was written uh, shortly before he retired. Geronimo. My husband has an app on his phone that counts down the years, months, and days until his retirement. In three years, five months, and 17 days, the plan is to have the house sold, the RV bought, and the wheels rolling on the open road. We'll chase the season. Every day can be spring-like, green with possibilities. But the closer that day gets, the more I think about what and who I'm leaving behind and the decisions of what possessions to trash, give to the kids, sell, put into storage. I mean, it's exciting to think that my next front yard could be a mountain vista or an ocean view, but it's also a little scary. We joke and say that when we've had enough of cavorting around the country, we'll just Thelma and Louise it off the cliff into the wild blue of eternity. But somehow that scene seems a little more romantic in a convertible than in a 36 foot motor home. Listening to Bowie's golden years, the promise of forever and a falling star. Listening to Bowie's golden years, the promise of forever in a falling star. Starry night, we make up our own constellations. Starry night, we make up our own constellations. So now we are on the road and enjoying it quite a bit, regardless of the sort of our strange circumstances right now. Uh, we were two months in Northern California during the shutdown. Uh, which really was not a bad place to be amongst the redwoods and the ocean nearby. So I wrote this piece when we were out there, and it's called Rebirth. Redwoods, moss-coated rocks, fiddlehead ferns, the pine needle path interrupted by protruding roots, just a whiff of sea brine down a mud-slick desire path into a cove of sand and rocks. Black monoliths rise from the swell. 
seagulls cause muffled by the waves crescendo. Tentacles of bull kelp tangled in sargassum. Iridescent bubbles floating on spoon. And me, arms stretched wide, alone in the sand, breathless, shoes cast aside, toes digging deep enough to take root. I throw my head back and sing one primal note to the sky. Water breaking, another chance at a first breath. Water breaking, another chance at a first breath. Sandpipers rescripting the shoreline, pink dawn. Sandpipers rescripting the shoreline, pink dawn. Spring rain, a wooded path blooming with epiphanies. Spring rain, a wooded path blooming with epiphanies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. I love the starry night and how you made your own constellation. So having your own mobile vehicle is a great retirement plan. And I think I'm going to work on it now. I have a long way to go though. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So uh, Gitanjali, please, right. Thank you, Akila. Thank you, Akila, for your poems on, for your little daughter. And Michael, that sequence was just brilliant, forgiven. Thank you so much for that. And Terry, what I really liked, uh, I, I mean, rebirth was just fantastic. Water breaking, beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And thank Ray too for the sequence, please. Okay, what I'd like to read now um, are uh, probably a few haibun. Um, I come from a little village called Kolangod in uh, Palakkad district in Kerala. And uh, we have a beautiful, temple there, Vishnu temple, and uh, you know, this uh, next high bun is dedicated to a lovely, lovely elephant that we had there called Padmanabhan. It's called Majesty. You are dressed in the resplendence that only you can carry off. The rays from the western sky glide off your jewelry and hold my gaze. After a while, my gaze is broken and is led away to the pink silk umbrella with gold trimming. Festival in May. Elephants nod to the beat of village drummers. Festival in May. Elephants nod to the beat of village drummers. That moment defined the word majesty for me. Years later, when I saw you again, after my travels across the seas and my inner journey through deserts, I had almost forgotten that word. You reminded me again. A homing pigeon on the temple roof. A homing pigeon on the temple roof. I too must return. Yesterday they called me. What does one say when an elephant dies? That he died? That he was a beautiful creature with superior intelligence and a spirit to match? That he had the grace of a hundred classical dancers when adorned in gold? That he worked untiringly every day of his living life? That the urchins who teased him knew that he would drench them with water the next minute? What does one say? That he had come as a boy of eight and grew up with his human cousins who talked to him in times of trouble. That he stood knowingly, nodding his large eyes, deep, sad. That we suspected he knew more of life than us all. That he ended an era graciously. Or that the chief priest at the temple had said, Did you hear about him? The lucky creature is in his lap now. 
Or do we just say that he died? Sandalwood smoke. Sandalwood smoke. A centaur rides the night sky. Sandalwood smoke. A centaur rides the night sky. So that's uh, something I'd written for the Genjuan about Padmanabhan, the elephant. I'd like to read one more haibun. I hope there's time. It's a very short haibun. It's again um, something from my life here in Chennai. It's called A Season for Song. It is that time of the year in Madras, the Tamil month of Margari. The rustle of silk saris, Carnatic music concerts, fried vadas, the aroma of filter coffee, the neighbor's daughter practicing to hold a note, and the sun turning gentler than in the other months. What else will I be missing this year, I wonder? Waking waking to the sound of birds waking to the sound of birds oncology what so these are just a few glimpses i'll hand it over to you akila thank you very much thank you so much kitanjali that was a very very poignant uh, collection um Sometimes when you're in the company of some brilliant poets coming out with a brilliant verse, you just want that you know, few minutes of silence to just take in everything that's been read. Oh. Well, I'm in for a beautiful Sunday today. So, well, it's uh, my turn. And uh, this set, I, I start with the haibun, um, which I wrote during the lockdown. So... This is what it looked like. And I don't know how, we started off in February, March, and we are already in the second half of the year. And usually the second half of the year in our country, in India, is so many festivals and celebrations one after the other. I don't know how this year is going to be now with this uh, pandemic, in the grip of a pandemic. But well, I am trying to live those festivals with some memories in these haiku and I hope you find yours too. So I'll start with the haibun. Timetable. She is not in a hurry, the grey pigeon on the parapet wall facing my balcony. She picks her feathers, bobs her neck up and down. I am late today. The cumbersome work, howsoever much scheduled, eats into you, once in a while, to say the least. Even my cup of tea betrayed me with the jaggery breaking down the milk. So much for a robotic quandary. The pigeon is my consolation, and I have grown to believe now that she waits for me, albeit with little impatience, she grunts her dismay with a pound of low notes. I wobble a bit, rest my tired hands on the railing, imploring her for empathy and forgiveness. I shrug my shoulders too. She bends down, pretending to peck at nothing in particular, and looks up. Lockdown routine. She asks me what day it is. Lockdown routine. She asks me what day it is. So we are still amidst lockdown and unlocking and well, seasons don't wait for these things. And we have already ushered in the monsoons and it's refreshing in these dark times. So I have one on that. Moist window. One by one, the colors of a rainbow. Moist window. One by one, the colors of a rainbow. Little after rain, we'll get ready for our favorite festival of a favorite god, Lord Ganesha, and his favorite delicacy, the rice dumplings, 
made of jaggery also, which we call as the modaks. This is for him. Evening Aarti. He keeps a watch on the modaks. Evening Aarti. He keeps a watch on the modaks. From there, we will move into the season of Dashara. Ten days and nine nights of music, dance, celebrations, fervor. Dandiya. Once again, our paths cross. Dandiya. Once again, our paths cross. And then will come our festival of lights and fireworks on a moonless night. Diwali. Morning after Diwali, we return the sky to the moon. Morning after Diwali, we return the sky to the moon. And then comes December, season's greetings, Christmas, New Year, new beginnings, new resolutions, last leaf. What does it take to let go? Last leaf. What does it take to let go? And well, in the new year, we usher in the harvest festival, which is uh, celebrated across the country. And as Gitanjali said, she read a haiku in the beginning for Pongal, which is the harvest in Tamil Nadu, and then it's called Makar Sankranti. So, this haiku is for that. Waiting to see what lies beyond. Kites flying. Waiting to see what lies beyond. Kites flying. Thank you. All right, so we have come to a close of this uh, beautiful panel reading. Thank you, Michael, Terry, Gitanjali. I hope you also equally enjoyed this, uh, this time. I wish we could read more and more and more. <laughs> you know, you just want to uh, you know, be floating in this uh, bliss. Thank you, Art Mantra, the curatorial team of Glass House Festival for organizing this. And uh, for all of you, dear virtual audience, there is some more for you. Do follow the link of Zoom which is being shared along with this video and join us, join this panel of poets, join me, Michael, Terry and Gitanjali for an interaction. Let's talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you all very much. Thank you for the glorious start. I am, I am recording nonstop until 10.30 tonight, our time. And I think that this, is, this has been a glorious, wonderful, wonderful beginning. So thank you so much.